Hey guys, welcome to part three of the uh, Raspberry Pi Kubernetes home lab that I'm building and we're configuring it with uh, Ansible. So we're taking all the manual tasks involved and we're putting them in the Ansible playbooks and we're putting those in uh, GitHub so we can pull them down later. Anyone else can pull them down and we can run them over and over and over. Um, so part two, we configured host names based on IP, some SSH properties. We created users, deleted user, changed some passwords. We just, we bootstrapped our nodes to get ready to begin configuring Kubernetes. But before we can actually configure uh, the cluster, bootstrap the Kubernetes cluster, we need to do some prerequisites. Uh, so in this video, I, I go over the prerequisites side by side um, with you in, we go over the documentation and we, we say, what do they need us to do before we can install Kubernetes? And we do those tasks, right? So those tasks are, they consist of well, first, just for the process of making this repeatable, I have to remove existing repos and GPG keys. So when you set this up, you're going to be creating a Docker repo and a Kubernetes repo in your system, and you're going to be downloading those GPG keys so you can pull software from those repos. Um, in the Ansible playbook, I put at the top before anything else to remove those repos and GPG keys. If they exist, we'll go over that later. It causes issues if you don't. We, but for, we need to open the firewall D ports. Um, here's kind of a snippet. If it's a master, it needs different ports in a worker. That's why there's a conditional here. We disable swap, load certain modules like BR net filter and overlay, edit the sysctl configuration, install container D, and then finally install kubelet, kubidium, kubectl, the Kubernetes uh, software packages. Um, so if all this code is going to be stored in GitHub, in the roles directory, here's the link. I'll link it to the description below, but it's in the roles directory. The role is called Kubidium install. Again, if you go to that GitHub directory and you go to roles Kubidium install, you'll find a readme, and that readme will have all the manual commands that correlate to the automatic commands we're doing with Ansible. So if there's an Ansible module for here, if there's a mod probe module where we're loading in the overlay and BR net filter, uh, here's how you would do that on the system without using Ansible. Here's how you would find to see if the module is loaded, and here's how you would load that module. And then how, here's how you would add the configuration to ensure that module is loaded across reboots. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the role now that we're going to use for uh, configuring the cluster with the prerequisites for kubeadm and also installing kubeadm. So I'm going to go over here and do an ansible-galaxy role init and I'm going to call it kubeadm install and that's going to generate the entire role directory structure and I have to sudo I go role successfully created so I have the role and the directory structure for that role over here so what I like to do when I'm going to start putting things into an Ansible playbook is I like to, uh, you know, see how these things are done manually, go through it step by step. How do I do it manually? And then how do I convert that into something Ansible can do? Is there a module for what I'm trying to do? Or am I going to have to use the command or the shell module? So I've gone ahead and using this page, we were looking at installing Kubidium, uh, bootstrapping clusters with Kubidium, installing Kubidium. It laid out the prerequisites, things we need to ensure that we've done, such as opening firewall ports, loading modules into the kernel, installing certain software before we can begin uh, bootstrapping our cluster. So I went ahead and I filled in all these tasks in Ansible based on uh, what we need to do over here. Um, so if you would like to see how I built this playbook, it's about an hour and a half, two hour long video. It'll be called, uh, you know, Kubernetes, Raspberry Pi Home Lab, part 3A, because this is part three, it'll be part 3A. It'll be posted after this one. Feel free to watch it if you just wanna watch me uh, build this Ansible playbook out, my thought process behind how I build playbooks and some relaxing music. But let's start by going over what we've got here. So first of all, this is our prereq playbook. So before we bootstrap our cluster, which will be in part four, um, we've gotta do some things. So I first start off by removing existing GPG keys and repos. So in this uh, playbook, in this process, we're going to create a kubernetes.list and a docker.list repo file. Uh, so here's docker.list 
a Kubernetes that list. And all they do is, is they tell us uh, where to get, where the repositories for Docker software and Kubernetes software are. And they each come with a public GPG key. Um, they work the first time you run the playbook. However, if you run it a subsequent time, every time after that, if these files are present, uh, it fails with security issues. So just to ensure using the file module and the with items, we're going to ensure all these files are absent from the system. So we're going to check if they're there and remove them if they are to prevent future issues. If we want to run the playbook over and over and over. So then after that, we're uh, using the firewall D module. I like firewall D. Um, so we have to install it using the apt module because we're on a Debian based system. Packages firewall D, state is present. We're going to open the required ports for master only. So over here, they tell us which ports we need on the control plane node, which is the master and the worker nodes. So again, we're using, you know, we're looping through our items here, our ports. So we can all, we only have to specify this task once. We don't have to do firewall D this port, and then another task firewall D this port. We can specify them all in one task and help things run smoother. And I've got a when statement for when the host is in the masters group. So what this when statement, that's what this when statement does. It, it takes all your group names, which is a list, and it looks for the host. And if it's in the group you define, masters or here workers, it runs that task. So this task won't be run on a worker node or any other node unless it's in that uh, host group. So I've got it broken out by workers, masters, load balancers, management. So then we move to restarting firewall D, but we also make sure that it's enabled. So when we reboot, system D turns on firewall D for us. Then we disable swap. And we're just using the shell module to do a swap off all command. Uh, if you have swap, I'm going to leave this in the playbook, but if you have swap enabled in your Etsy FSTAB, you're going to want to go ahead and comment that out or remove it. And that's what this command is for. That way swap is removed persistently across reboots. Because if you, if you have swap in Etsy FSTAB and you do this command, it's only going to work for that. It's only going to work until you reboot the system. So make sure you remove it from Etsy FSTAB. Um, da -da -da. So next we have to let IP tables see bridge traffic. And how that works is we have to load some modules using mod probe. So we have a mod probe module for Ansible here. And again, I'm looping through a list here to make this easier, more precise and succinct. Is that a word? I think that's a word. We're loading the BR net filter. Um, and you won't see that here, actually. Um, it just says load BR net filter, right? Um, but one of these tabs here is the container runtime, right? And for installing container D, uh, where is it? Container D, container D, right? You actually have to make sure the overlay module is loaded as well. So I'm loading them both here, BR net filter and overlay. I'm creating a kates.conf in modules load.d. And what that does is when the system, if you do this, if you load these modules into the system and then it reboots, they won't be loaded again unless you have them, uh, unless you tell the system the modules you want to load every time, any extra modules. So we've created kates.conf, which corresponds to uh, k8modules.conf. And that's just, uh, the container D requirements and the kubadium requirements. And then we have our cctl.conf.j2, .j2, which has, oh, where'd it go? Cctl, which has some more lines we need to ensure that we put in there. Um, so I went ahead and made a template for that as well. And that gets put in cctl.d. So it gets added to the main cctl.conf when the system's loaded, and then we apply those systems to the system immediately. And because they're in sysctl.d in a configuration file, they'll apply persistently across reboots as well. Then we install container D. So we actually have to install some prerequisite software for these tasks. So we install all these, again, using the apt module when we specify the packages we want. 
and then we can using shell. So there is a curl and a GPG module, but for the purposes of time, because this, this took me a while, um, I'm just going to use the shell command. And these are the files we're removing at the beginning of this playbook, this GPG key and this repo docker.list file. So we're going to pull in the GPG key. We're going to using the template module, again, we're going to place docker.list.j2, which is a temper template uh, that just points, you know, here's our architecture, uh, here's the GPG key, and it points to uh, the repository out on the internet. Once we set up a repo, though, we have to do an apt get update, and that's what in the apt module, this update cache yes command does. This is the equivalent of apt get update. So we create the repo, do an apt get update, and then we can install whatever package we want here, containerd.io. Once it's installed, we build the containerd config directory in etsy containerd. So using the file module, we specify we want to create this directory, state directory. Then we tell containerd where its new config is located. So containerd config default, etsy containerd config.toml. We restart containerd, so it begins to use that new location for its configuration. We place our config.toml template that we've generated here, uh, and it's got some infor extra information in here for our C group drivers, and that's why I placed that there. And then we restart again for good measure, restart containerd, and we're also making containerd is enabled by systemd uh, for persistent, so it starts persistently across reboot. And then we do the same for installing our Kubernetes software. We need to download the Google Cloud GPG key, set up a repo, again, using the template module. We need to, again, apt get update, and then we decide we want kubectl, which is the command line tool, on all the Raspberry Pis in my lab, all six Raspberry Pis. But I only want kubeadm on the K8s cluster. I don't need it on my NFS share, my TFTP server, my load balancer but I do need kubelet on my workers. So I'm not specifying a when condition for kubectl because that goes on everything. But I am specifying a when condition, again, using group names, if this host is in the masters or workers group, uh, then run this task. Or in the case of kubelet, because it only goes on the workers, if it's in the workers group, only run these tasks. So if you would like uh, to see how I made this playbook. Again, there's a part 3a to this. You're more than welcome to go check it out. It's just me casually explaining, you know, narrat narrating how I write a playbook to some relaxing music. Uh, and if not, you can skip over this. There'll be a part four, which where will be where we actually bootstrap the cluster, again, using Ansible. And again, I'm going to edit this readme here. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to I'm going to go edit it. Uh, so all these commands that we're doing here in Ansible, I'll put the manual commands in the readme. That way, if you don't want to use Ansible, if you don't have access to Ansible and you just want to do all these tasks manually, you can go ahead and do that.